Hello, I'm Steph McGovern and this is BT's The Future Is Now series. In it, we talk to companies that are already doing today what we'll all be doing in the future. Now we've all heard of things like 5G, artificial intelligence, the cloud, but what does it all mean? And how could it change the way we work and collaborate? Well, to answer some of those questions, we're going to talk to Nick Fellingham, who's CEO and co-founder of Condense Reality. Hi, Nick. Hi, Steph. Hi, yeah, lovely to chat to you. Um, tell us a bit about what you guys are doing, because it sounds really exciting. Yeah, so we're a volumetric video company, and we aim to be the first company that can stream broadcast quality volumetric video of live events. And this is really cutting edge stuff, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. So volumetric video does exist already, but what we're doing is recording and streaming it in real time, uh, and that's something that we're very proud of. Can you show us a demonstration then? Yeah, of course. So if you want to pick up the tablet and open up our app, and then I'll be able to take you through from there. Oh, look, I can see you. Give us a wave, Nick. Hi, Steph. This is cool. So how does it work then? So I'm in our studio in Bristol, and I'm surrounded by cameras. These cameras are then fed into computers which combine all the feeds into a single 3D model. Our software calculates the size and the shape of the objects that are in the scene. And if there's any areas which cameras can't see, then we use deep learning to fill in the blanks. Well, and then you stream it. Exactly. So just like a standard 2D live stream, you can see the action as it happens. At the moment, we support viewing on phones, tablets, and computers. Uh, but soon we'll be supporting games consoles and smart TVs as well. Now, you need a good internet connection to view this kind of content, which is why we're really excited about the potential for 5G to improve the quality of the experience. I imagine some people have seen this type of thing before, but what you're working on is quite different, isn't it, from anything else? Exactly, yeah. So people often confuse this technology with motion capture, which captures movement so that a 3D model can then be animated. With our technology, we actually capture everything. So we capture the performer, what clothes they're wearing, um, their facial expressions, and any objects that are in the scene as well. Now, systems like this do already exist, but they require hundreds of cameras, a studio, and they often take many hours or even days to process the output. So we use deep learning to reduce the number of cameras required, and then we're able to process the output in real time. I'm sure you've guessed my next question, Nick. What is deep learning? So deep learning is a technique where we can actually train a computer to recognize and predict patterns in data. So we use this to teach our system to recognize the shape of objects, the type of materials they're made of, and how they're lit. Now, humans are very good at this. So I can see through the screen that you're wearing denim. And even though I don't know for sure, I can make a pretty good guess that the back of you is also the same. So with deep learning, we use a huge amount of data to teach a computer how to make these kind of guesses based on previous experiences. The difficulty with this is doing it in real time. And so this is what we're working towards, and it's also what makes our system unique. Now, we've used a bit of editing to help this, but you're not far off it being live, are you? That's right. So our algorithm's constantly improving and learning as we give it more data, and each update, the delays reduced and the quality is improved. So before long, we're going to be able to live stream video that you can interact with and is indistinguishable from the real thing. Oh, that's great. Cheers, Nick. Well, if you want to have a go at this yourselves, do look out for the links at the end of the video. So Nick, you're a small company, but you're collaborating as part of the 5G Edge XR consortium, aren't you? Can you explain what that's all about? Yeah, so 5G Edge XR is a consortium that's led by BT and it's partly funded by the government's uh, Department for Digital, Culture, Media and Sport. Uh, and basically it aims to showcase how 5G and in particular edge computing can push forward what's possible with immersive applications. And so the XR in 5G Edge XR stands for cross-reality, which includes virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. And volumetric video is a content that works really well across all of those platforms. 
And there's a really eclectic mix as part of this group, isn't there? Because you've got a university, a dance company, a cloud-based processor, an AI sound mixer. I'm guessing that's because you all bring something different to the party. Exactly, yeah. So basically, each one of the companies has quite a specific specialization. Um, but it's one of those consortiums where it's greater than the sum of its parts. It feels like collaboration is key to this. So do you think as well your technology is going to help others collaborate too? A hundred percent, yeah. So at the moment we're focusing on live events, but I think that this technology as it evolves and as it improves will definitely be used for collaboration. And actually as part of the project, um, one of the use cases is a dance company doing remote dance lessons um, using this tech. Well, to talk about the importance of collaborating, we spoke to Research Realisation Director at Adastral Park, Lisa Perkins. So I'm here at BT's Global R&D Innovation Showcase, and we're really excited about this new consortium looking at 5G and Edge XR technology. So what we have here at Adastral Park is what I believe to be a thriving innovation ecosystem. We've moved from a position of BT being the sole occupant here at Adastral to where we are now with 150 companies as part of our ecosystem. Those companies range in size from large organisations such as BT right through to our startup community. And what we have is a really effective community that is driving real innovation. So we realized during lockdown that the use of video communications escalated. It doubled, 70% of adults were making video calls where maybe they weren't normally. And that has created this fantastic platform for us to build in terms of looking at how we enhance that experience. And volumetric video is a great example where you can really immerse yourself in the experience and improve that way of collaborating. Clearly, it has a great use case in the form of sport, but we see volumetric video bringing to life the way that we can collaborate in education, in healthcare, in retail, and right across all different industry sectors. For example, in health, a doctor with a scan that is transformed into volumetric video can interact with that scan in a way that they just can't currently. In architecture, an architect can liaise with his or her clients and get around the model that they can build, but in a virtual world. Nick, I want to talk to you about how your technology can impact our lives. But first, let me ask you about how you guys are working at the moment, because I imagine, like us, it's remote working. <laughs> yeah, exactly, it is. And we actually set ourselves up as a remote first company. Uh, and this wouldn't have been possible even five years ago because the technology which gives us that flexibility just didn't exist. And that technology, you mean like faster broadband and video calls? Exactly, yeah. And I'm really excited actually for our technology um, to help bring, bring people even closer together. Well, to tell us a little bit more about how this technology could change the way we interact with each other in the future, we spoke to Dr. Nicola Millard, who's Principal Innovation Partner at BT. So the exciting thing about being at Adastral is always we get to see technologies at their very infancy. So I've worked for BT for a very long time. Back in the 90s, video was the new exciting thing, but it was very clunky and very pixelated at the time. But technologies like volumetric video, which uh, obviously we have here in our showcases, enables us to actually say, is this going to be the next future thing? And it's always interesting. And, and the, the reason why I love my job is to actually put technologies in front of people and say, well, how do you want to use these things? Because frankly, technology alone isn't going to solve our problems. We actually need people to use it. So, um, so a lot of the work that we do here is really around getting people to play, to see, to feel, to actually work with these technologies and actually figure out, ah, oh, I can absolutely see that this would change my life. Let's try it. Oh, thanks, Nicola. So, Nick, that's what you're aiming for for the future. But what about now? What are you working on at the minute? So at the moment, our focus is on live sport. And we've actually conducted a couple of small scale tests already 
where we can stream an event to viewers and they can watch the content back from any angle. So what do you think this means for live sport then? So we think it's going to be an absolute game changer for live sport. I think in the future, it's likely that this will be the standard way to watch sports events. Um, and I'm sure most sports fans would agree that there's nothing quite like being at the event itself. Um, however, we do think that this technology brings you just a step closer towards that experience. Yeah, and you say you're starting on a small scale. What's the ambition then with it? So for us at the moment, our focus is on scaling the capture area whilst keeping the quality and keeping the real time. Um, eventually, we think we're going to be able to get towards a tennis court uh, and then following that, a full football match. Yeah, so it won't be long then before I can watch Middlesbrough on my coffee table at home. Hopefully not, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic, I look forward to that. So Nick, before you go, I've got to ask you, what would be your key bit of advice for businesses? If you really want to create disruptive technology, sometimes you need to take a bit of a leap of faith. So part of our business model is built around technology which doesn't yet exist, but in the not too distant future, we're confident that it will. Good advice. Thank you very much, Nick. And thanks, Nick, as well, for showing us how the future is now for condensed reality. Now, we also asked Nicola and Lisa the same question. One bit of advice for companies would probably be be open to collaboration, innovation and the art of the possible. So in the future, we see a digital fabric of multiple technologies coming together to help the way that we run our businesses. But we must also remember that the biggest disruptor into the future is not the technology alone, it's people. Bring your people along with you and you will get successful business strategies. Oh, thanks, Nicola and Lisa. And of course, for showing us what the future holds for all of us. Now, if you want more information on anything we've discussed, then everything is available to download from the links. And you can also try it out for yourself as well. It's really good fun. <laughs>